Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Uh, this week, I wanted to jump ahead to the next large uh, section of history of the Forgotten Realms, the Time of Troubles. This was a very big storyline that was set up to explain the changes that were happening from AD&D 1st edition to 2nd edition. So let's just dive right in. We're going to talk about the Dead Three first. Uh, we got to kind of set the stage with all the characters before we can explain what really happened. Now, the Dead Three were Bane, Ball, and Merkel. And they were three mortal humans that banded together. They forged a pact of mutual aid and ambition. Together, they would conquer the world and the heavens, becoming gods unto, unto themselves. Uh, they targeted the god of death, Jergal. The three overcame every obstacle that Jergal threw at them, and eventually um, Jergal willingly stepped aside, claiming he was happy to grant his powers to these three mortals. He then asked which among them would rule, at which point a fierce argument broke out between the three of them, and Jergal proposed to divide up his portfolio for them based upon a game of Knucklebones, which is an ancient game of real origins. It's kind of like Jax, but it's closely connected to that of Dice. So basically, they played a game of chance. Bane won and claimed dominion over the sphere of strife, hatred, and tyranny. Merkel became known as the god of the dead, and Baal became the god of murder and death. Presumably, Jergal did this because he was bored with his position. He took a form of a demigod under Merkel. Now, flash forward a bit, and the dead three are still trying to gain more power. Not content with their, their god status, Bane and Merkel try to steal the Tablets of Fate from the over-deity Ao. So the Tablets of Fate were these stone slabs on which the official portfolios of every one of the deities were written. They thought that by stealing them, they could rewrite the Pantheon and put themselves in a position of more power. So Bane and Merkel hid the Tablets on Faerun. When Eo realized that they were stolen, he summoned all the deities and demanded those guilty to turn them over now. And nobody came forward, so Eo, in 1358, cast out the gods and sent them to live as mortals on Faerun. You see, Eo was angry that the tablets were stolen, but more so he was angry at the gods having a pursuit for more power and fighting amongst each other rather than concerning themselves with, with their followers. So this was kind of a, you're going to learn your lesson by go, going and living with the people that worship you. The gods coming to Faerun um, wreaked magical havoc on Tyrell. Um, first off, divine magic ceased to function altogether. Unless a cleric was within one mile of their deity's avatar, and arcane magic ceased to be regulated by Mistra and became dangerously unpredictable. So I mentioned this earlier, but the Time of Troubles was a tie-in event. Um, AD&D 2nd Edition had just been published with changes to how magic worked and to uh, changes to playable classes. And they explain these changes through the events of the Time of Troubles. There was a book series by Richard Owlinson that explained what happened, and there was a tie-in campaign written by Ed Greenwood. Now, in the three-part adventure, your party is joined by Midnight, a mage, and Cyric to go on a quest to find the Tablets of Fate. Bane hid one of the tablets in Tantris, a city in Faerun, um, and that city contained the avatar of Torm, the god of loyalty and righteousness. Now, Torm and Bane had an epic fight in the harbor of Tantris. Torm absorbed the souls of thousands of willing faithful um, in the city to become strong enough to defeat Bane. In the end, both gods slew each other and left parts of the city destroyed, as well as turned it into a massive dead magic zone. Mistra wanted to return to the Astral Sea, um, and so she went there via the Celestial Stairway, but was stopped by Helm. Now, Helm was the only god that Ao didn't send to Faerun as a mortal, because he needed somebody to guard the gate to make sure that these uh, deities aren't trying to get back into the Astral Sea without the Tablets of Fate. So Mistra argued with Helm, saying that she had nothing to do with the theft of the tablets, and to let her pass so that she can speak with Lord Ao herself and regain her position um, to basically protect the Weave. Helm was ordered not to let any deity back unless they had the tablets. Furious, Mistra attacked him with magic, but Helm just brushed it off. So Mistra is 
still a deity, but she's in her avatar form, which is significantly weaker than Helm, who is in his full deity form. She leapt at him with fire in her mouth and grappled him and just tried to take Helm out, but Helm grabbed her with one hand and with the other hand, his gauntleted fist, he punched her, exploding Mistra and killing her. And this caused more damage to the weave. Now another god, Mask, the Lord of Shadows, during the time of troubles, he took the form of a powerful sword. And we mentioned him earlier, um, Siric, one of the uh, adventurers that joins you. He's like a fighter thief. He killed the halfling that was wielding Mask. And then through a series of events, he used the sword to kill Baal, the god of murder. And he named the sword God's Bane. Siric then inherits the profile of Baal to eventually become a deity. Baal foresaw his death and populated Faerun with his progeny called the Baal Spawn in an effort to resurrect himself later. And that story was explored in the Baldur's Gate series, which I'm realizing I have never played. I really should play Baldur's Gate. I played the hell out of Neverwinter Nights, but I never played, I never went back and played Baldur's Gate. So that's on my to-do list. Now, Merkel was killed in a duel with Midnight. In their story, as they're trying to find all of the Tablets of Fate, they're running into the Dead Three. You eventually run into a, a fight with Merkel, and Merkel was killed in a duel with Midnight, who at the time was wielding the powers of Mistra. Before Mistra was killed, she um, kind of imbued an amulet and gave that amulet to Midnight so that Midnight would have magical powers that worked. Now, with the Dead Three dead, um, Bane killed by Torn, Baal killed by Siric, and Merkel killed by Midnight. Your heroes are able to gather all of the Tablets of Fate and they can return them to Ao. Now, Torm, who died in the fight with Bane, was resurrected by Ao because he died fulfilling his obligations of his portfolio. And Ao also selected Midnight to replace the destroyed Mistra, restoring magic to Tyrell, or restoring not crazy wild magic to trail. <laughs> Midnight took Mistra's name to avoid confusion. And now Siric, uh, earlier he obtained Baal's portfolio for defeating him in battle, but Bane's portfolio was divided among Siric and Bane's half-demon son, uh, who has a very interesting name, Yachtu Zvim. Bane eventually came back uh, because 10 years after the Time of Troubles, a green fire emerged inside of Zvim and he was consumed by it, which from this green fire emerged a resurrected Bane. Before Merkel died in the duel with Midnight, he infused a crown with the remains of his sentience and teleported it away. The artifact was known as the Crown of Horns, which was created in negative 2,237 DR by a Netherese archwizard. And then it was altered by Merkel in 1358 when he was in his avatar form here during the Time of Troubles. Now through the crown, Merkel continued to spread evil through the, throughout the realms, and he really enjoyed tormenting members of the Church of Siric. Ao allowed the gods to return to their homes, um, but also lifted the barrier that prevented the Mohorandi gods from reuniting with their divine selves. So we have to back up here. In episode six, we discussed Ao allowing those Egyptian style gods um, to help the Milan by coming to the crystal sphere that contained Turil. Well, apparently all this time, these avatars were stuck on Turil after standing up to the Mascari wizards. They ended up as god kings. They actually ruled the Milan people in various cities, unable to return to their home sphere. After the Time of Troubles, they were able to join back with their divine selves. And also, finally, Ao changed the way that divine power worked. And a deity's influence and power was now directly tied to their worshippers. So the more worshippers you have, the more faithful they are, the more powerful the deity. Which was really the goal of Ao the whole time. He wanted the gods to care more about their followers rather than fighting with each other. And that's where we'll end it today. The Time of Troubles was a big event. It was a story to explain what changed between AD&D 1st edition to 2nd edition. Um, and in the future, there are similar large-scale events from 2nd edition to 3rd edition and from 3rd to 4th, etc., etc., leading up to the Sundering, which is the 5th edition world-changing event. And thanks again for watching, everyone. Uh, it's really great to hear that everyone seems to be enjoying these videos. Please like and share with a friend. Leave any comments you like. I'll try to answer any questions that I can. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.